morning and welcome to our service at Sunderland's Elim. I'm so pleased that you've joined with us. We've opened with the song Raise a Hallelujah. And yeah, we can come this morning and raise a hallelujah. Just give our praise to our God. He's a God who is merciful, a God who is just, a God who is gracious, a God who loved us so much that he gave his son for us. He's a God who's our healer, a God who's our provider. There are, there are so many things we could say about our God. He is just so immense, so awesome. He's the only one whom deserves all of our praise and all of our hallelujahs. Yesterday, we celebrated love. Um, and we just want to give congratulations to Sue and Rob, who yesterday tied the knot in Manchester. We weren't able to join with them. Current restrictions meant that numbers were, were limited, um, but they wanted us to be part of their service. So I'm just going to play something for you now that was recorded as part of their wedding service, but it's something that explains about what God's idea of love is. If I speak in human or angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or the clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I will give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Love is patient and kind, love is not jealous, it does not boast, and it is not proud. Love is not rude, it is not selfish, and does not get upset with others. Love does not count up wrongs that have been done. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I taught like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child, when I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection, as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three things remain, faith, hope and love. But the greatest of these is love. Amen. Morning kids and welcome to the children's part of our service this morning. I've come outside to do our teaching this morning because, you know, Jesus did most of his teaching outside. Sometimes he was in the synagogue and out in the temple but a lot of the time he was just outside talking to people and I just want to share a little bit this morning from the book of Luke and it's found in chapter 5 and I'll tell you the story first you see Jesus was teaching by the side of the lake and at the water's edge were a couple of boats so he got into one of the boats and he asked Simon who later on we call Simon Peter, he asked Simon just to, to go off, um, to leave the shore and just go a little ways out to sea so that he could teach the people from the boat. And all the people were on the shoreline. And after he'd finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for the catch. But Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and we haven't caught anything. But because you say so, 
I will let down the nets. And when he did, they caught such a large number of fish that the net began to break and they had to signal over to some other fishermen to bring a second boat because there were so many fish. So when Simon saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and he said, oh, go away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. Because he was so astonished at the catch of fish that they'd had, there was just so many. But Jesus then said to Simon, don't be afraid, from now on, you'll fish for people. So they pulled their boats up onto the shore and they left everything and they followed Jesus. And there's just a couple of things I wanna kind of pull out of that story. You see, Peter, or Simon Peter, he was a fisherman, he was an expert fisherman, that's what he did. And he'd been fishing all night because night time is the best time to fish. And this was now the middle of the day. And you think, hold on, you've got a carpenter. Jesus was a carpenter. What did he know about fishing? But Simon listened to Jesus. Even though Jesus was a carpenter and Simon was the expert fisherman, he listened to Jesus and he trusted Jesus. Do you know why? He recognised that Jesus was special. He recognised that Jesus wasn't just some ordinary person but he knew that Jesus was special. He then goes on and after he sees the number of fish and the amazing miracle that had been done, he says about, oh Lord, go away from me, I'm a sinful man. You see, Simon, Simon recognised that really he wasn't worthy to be in Jesus's presence because he was a man who led, had a sinful life. He was a man who did things wrong, who made mistakes. And he recognized that. And that's something that's really important because we have to recognize for ourselves that actually we don't deserve God's love. We don't deserve um, God's forgiveness but it's because God loves us so much that he forgives us, that he wants to be with us. There's nothing we can do to earn it. We'll never be good enough, but God loves us and God wants us to be with him. And then towards the end of that story, we heard about how they pulled the boats up on the shore, they left everything and they followed him. Do you know, they recognised that Jesus was special. They recognised that they needed Jesus in their life. And they were so happy, so excited that they just left everything behind because they knew the most important thing was to follow Jesus. So I just want you to think, the best thing that you can do in your life is to follow Jesus to say, yes, Jesus, I know you love me and I want to be a follower of you.
Good morning. We come to the Word of God now. And uh, before I read Numbers chapter 10, will you please pray with me? Father, we pray now that the Word of God might come to us in all its power, in all its wonder, and in all its glory. And we pray, dear God and Father, that you'll bless your Word and to our hearts and glorify your name. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm reading from Numbers chapter 10, beginning at verse 1. I'm reading from the message paraphrase, so I hope you'll forgive me. I know some folks are not comfortable with that, but for this morning's exposition, I'd, I'd like to read from uh, the message paraphrase. It's entitled, Two Bugles. Um, in your Bibles, it may say the two trumpets, but this is the two bugles, same thing. God spoke to Moses, make two bugles of hammered silver use them to call the congregation together and give marching or marching orders to the camps when you blow them the whole community will meet you at the entrance of the tent of meeting when a bugle gives a single short blast that's the signal for the leaders the heads of the clans to assemble when it gives a long blast that's the signal to march at the first blast the tribes who were camped on the east side set out at the second blast the camps on the south set out the long blasts are the signals to march the bugle call that gathers the assembly is different from the signal to march and then the rest of the verse goes on to talk about Aaron and the priests are in charge of the blowing of the bugles blowing of the trumpets uh, and it's explained the order uh, and how to use the trumpets to use them to call the people into warfare into battle to use the trumpets to call the people to worship to rejoice and be glad and as we read uh, numbers chapter 10 uh, we realize that there are six things that happen when the trumpet is called first it calls the people to assemble get ready to receive orders get re ready to receive instruction from the lord come to assemble come to the place of meeting uh, the second thing is the trumpets will sound to warn as a warning that there's a problem look out there's something wrong be on your guard thirdly it's used as an alarm uh, there's an attack imminent the enemies on the loose in Nehemiah uh, used this method when building the walls and as the, the the men built the walls with a trowel in one hand and a sword in the other there were trumpeters uh, appointed across uh, the walls to watch out for the enemy who they knew could attack at any time watch out there's an attack coming warfare the trumpets are used in, in warfare to sound the alarm. What does it say in um, uh, Joel chapter 2? Or is it Joel chapter 3? I can't remember. But uh, the Joel chapter 2, uh, sound the alarm. Sound the trumpets. 
in Zion, in the, in the mountain of God's people. Trumpets are used in warfare. And armies down through time have been directed and controlled by the sound of the trumpet, calling the, them into this position and that position to, to attack you, to retreat there. Trumpets are used in warfare. Trumpets here were used to call the people to be ready to move out, to pack up, to get ready to move out. Trumpets were there uh, to give them uh, the sound for the march. And then the trumpets were used, particularly you see this in Le Leviticus 23, call to worship, calling the people to be exuberant and joyful in praise of their great God. The sound of trumpets. Oh, I love the sound of trumpets. I love brass and particularly the trumpets. And we were particularly blessed in my home assembly to, to have a, a little orchestra, as it were. No, it wasn't a band, it was almost an orchestra. And we had four trumpeters. Oh, and to hear them blast out on Easter Sunday morning, Christ the Lord is risen today. Oh, up from the graveyard he, he arose. Whoa, the building would shake as these young men blew their trumpets announcing great news. Have you heard the trumpet? Have you heard the trumpet sounds? Have you heard God trumpeting out to his people in these days the message to gather, to assemble, to come to him? To hear what he's got to say. Now I know buildings are in lockdown. Some people said the church is closed. Oh no, the church is not closed. Get it right. The building is closed. But God has still called his people to gather, to hear and to listen and to receive. Thank God for modern technology. We ignore it at our peril. Let me tell you that the enemy is getting into homes. The devil is getting into bedrooms and into, in, 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 into lounges all over the world. Getting his pernicious, evil degradation into families, into young people or into children. Uh, and, and he's using this modern technology. We must adapt and use the modern technology to warn, to sound the alarm, to get the word of God out to these people. Be not deceived. There are so many messages. There are so many words uh, around today. The, the siren sounds, the, uh, the sound of the trumpet that's out of tune. You know, false messages, false calls. We need to come and gather and use whatever means that we have. And I, I'm sorry that many people are, are not able. They haven't got the facilities. But we get the message out to them. We get the message out on, on CDs, or, or, on DVDs. We get the word out to them in newsletters and in information. Call them to be warned that the enemy is trying to rob and steal. Call them to do warfare. Call them to prayer. Call them to prayer. To, to, to come on in Zoom meetings. To call them to prayer in their daily worship. To pray for the onward move and march of the church of God. I am thrilled to hear that more people than ever went to church have now come on online and listened to church services, been part of church services up and down the country. The report has come back of those who never darkened the doors of a church building are now taking the opportunity to hear. What a glorious opportunity. Oh, what a glorious opportunity that the message is getting into, into homes. And God is sounding his message. The trumpet is sounding into homes. Do you know in scripture, uh, trumpets are used practically and prophetically. Here we are hearing of the, the practical instructions to, a, to a, a nation of people, two and a half million strong, uh, left Egypt, come out of bondage and are wandering through the desert. And to be able to control and give instruction to so vast a congregation, 
trumpets were used. God in his wisdom, trumpets were used to control them, to lead them, to guide them. And today, God's message and word comes to his people, to his servants, to make known and expound the voice of God to the people. And no matter what the enemy might do to shut us up, to close our buildings, the people of God need to be trumpeted out the message of God. It, it's a practical message. It's a prophetical message. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. There's coming a day when the trumpet of God is going to sound. And are we going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air? Oh, we look forward to that trumpet. But God's trumpet is still sounding. God's trumpet is still sounding through leaders uh, nationally, internationally, through leaders of assemblies. God's word is coming. God's voice is being heard. Do re be ready to do warfare. Be ready to do battle. Be ready to take on board. Ah, oh, to take on board the word of the Lord. Come and do God's word. Come and do God's work. Come and bless, dear father, dear friend. Come and bless others. Come and bless them in Jesus' name. Let the word of God go forward with power and with blessing. Sound an alarm. Let the people know it's a dangerous time. You need to get right with God. We're called to do warfare. We're called to gather in prayer. We've, we've got Alpha starting as a church. And you know what Alpha is? Alpha is an opportunity for people to come and hear the word of God. Do you know, without even leaving their homes, we can go with the word of God into their homes. And people are opening up. People are signing up and saying, yes, we want it. And they're coming. They're coming. They're registering. Are you praying for it, my friend? Are you praying for Alpha? You might not understand how it works. You might not understand what it's all about. But let me tell you, it's an amazing tool to get the word over. Listen, the trumpet is sounding. The trumpet of a call to prayer. The trumpet sounding for you and me to gather in prayer in the home. Saturdays now is our prayer time. Eight o'clock on the Saturday morning. But that's inconvenient. Let me tell you, church, from what I see uh, of the Church of Jesus Christ today, any time is inconvenient. We have to put ourselves out. We have to change what's going on. We have to rearrange things so that we make time to pray for the work of God, to make time for, to pray for the servants of God, to make time to pray for the leaders of the church who are trying trying to trumpet out to us the great need of the hour. They're calling us to warfare. The trumpet sounding, calling us to warfare. What are we doing? We're being comfortable in our own homes, with our own little families, doing our own little thing there. That's great. It's good that you're with your families. It's good that you spend time with them. But we've got a battle on our hands, church. We've got a battle on our hands. The enemy wants to close us down to shut us up. But we are called to say, no, we're not having it. And whilst we don't use the building at the moment because we can't worship properly, let me tell you this much. We will use everything to, at our exposure to uh, availability to, to, to make known the voice of God. We will use the internet. We will use Yahoo. We will use uh, YouTube, we will use Facebook, we will use Zoom to get the word of God out to the people and get the word out to lost sinners. We've got the greatest message in the world and people need to hear it. We've got the greatest saviour that there's ever been and he's a wonderful saviour and people need to hear about him. They're lost in their sin. Church, if we shut up and do nothing, who's going to tell them? Who's going to go with the message? This is the trumpet voice of God calling us to stand up and be counted to do warfare, to do warfare in the place of prayer, to do warfare on our knees, to do warfare over Zoom. The call to pray the trumpet sounding calling us 
to get ready to move out. Yes, we need to be ready for what the trumpet calls. We need to be ready walking with the Lord. But how, how often have I heard this said down through my 50 odd years of being a Christian? But God's doing a new thing. And let me tell you, sometimes he wasn't, but many times he was. There's been the reformations, there's been the revivals, there's been the restorations. Uh, there, there is, uh, people are calling it reset now. People are calling it reset. We're having to reset the way we do things. And God is, I believe, using what's happened to bring the church to this time where we wake up and we get ready to move out with the message, to move out with the church of God, move out. To those round and about us. Can you imagine? I, I can see it now. The trumpet sounds throughout the camps. Get ready to move. Get ready to march. Oh. Oh. Why have we got to move again? I'm comfortable here. And it's good. We've got a good well here. Oh, and the, and the crop uh, and the flocks are happy here. Why have we got to move again? Oh, it's always move. What? And it can be like that, you know, in church. Oh, wh wh why, why, why have we got to do it this way? Why, why have we got to do it that way? Why have you moved the chairs? Why have you done this? Why are you singing that? Why, why, why? You read in one Corinthians chapter ten. You read about the, the wanderings of the people of God. And one thing that they did with expertise, it says in the scriptures, they grumbled because they were called to move. To move to the promised land, to where the milk and honey flowed. And I know, yeah, I believe one day we're going to get into that heavenly realm. We're going to be with the Lord forevermore, yes. But God is calling us to move on to the green pastures, to the abundant pastures of his grace and glory now, to walk kingdom living, to walk kingdom life. We are called to move out from where we've been. Some have become dried up wineskins. We need to be new wineskins. We need to be available to take the fresh oil and move out as God calls us to move. Are you ready? Are you ready to move in the power of God? Are you ready to communicate God's message? Are you ready to give your money to finance the work of God? A call's gone out from this fellowship and many other Christian organizations throughout the nation who are suffering because of the lack of giving of the people of God. I heard one, one, one old gentleman say once when, uh, when I was young, when he was talking to the church about finance and money, and he said, listen, people, God's money is in the pockets of God's people and in the bank accounts of God's people. Before you get too excited about it, it's God's money. And you need to release it. We need to release it for the benefit of the work of God, for the work of God to go forward. We, we are being called to communicate. We are being called to finance. We are being called to prayer. We are being called to move out. The trumpets sounding, have you heard them? And they're not off key. They're not discordant sounds. They're blasting out the fanfare of the word of God. Things have changed. Listen, we are living in a society, people are waiting to go back to how it used to be. We'll never go back to how it used to be. Things have changed, folks, and we need to get used to that idea. Let me tell you, before you jump at me, the word of God hasn't changed. The words of scripture have not changed. The message that it brings that Jesus is the Christ, the only saviour, hasn't changed and never will change. The doctrines of God have not changed and will never change. The word of the Lord endures forever and long may it be so here. What has changed 
is the way how we're going to do things. The new technology, the new availability of going into people's homes. Wow, who would have thought that possible? It used to be said, the Englishman's home is his castle. He shuts the door and shuts everybody out. Today, out there, invades the home through all the technology and the stuff. The devil will make use of it. So we need to get up to date on it and take advantage of it and pray for those who are good at it. Pray for those who are good at using it. You, you feel you get a bit complicated and, oh, yet yeah, I understand. But pray, you're called to pray for them. We're called to pray for one another, to see the work of God move on. Yes, the trumpet's going to sound one day. But are you listening? Are you listening to what God's trumpeting now? The call. You need hearing aids. You need to unstop your ears. You're not hearing. Oh, have you heard? And you're not comfortable with what you've heard. And have discounted it. And walked away from it. You won't be the first and you won't be the last. <laughs> Listen to what God is saying. Listen to God, what God is speaking to his people today, those who are shut in, those who are stuck at home, listen to what God is trumpeting out to you today. The call to prayer, the call to intercession, the call to warfare, the call to assemble and hear the word of God. I've said enough now. I'm sure you've got the message. Oh, my dear brother, my sister this morning, what's God saying to you? What's God saying to you? And let me tell you this much. He won't say anything that's not in Scripture. He won't contradict his word. So listen, you need to, you know, people are waiting for some sort of airy fairy message from on high. God speaks through his word to us. And we need to hear it. We need to hear it and make it available. Oh, dear brother, sister, friend, listening this morning, I earnestly pray that together we hear from God and we move on together. We move on together. Come and pray with me now, church. Oh, God, you've heard your word this morning. Oh, Father, oh, Father, just speak to every heart that's listening. Speak to every person that's hearing the word of the Lord this morning. Speak to every person in the sound of my voice that, dear God, they'll hear you speak. They'll hear you trumpeting out the truths to move on, to do warfare, to do battle. Oh, God, our Father, we pray that as the people of God associated with this fellowship, Elim Sunderland, that, Lord God, we'll rise to the occasion. Oh, God, speaking into our hearts and lives day by day moment by moment make a change in our lives dear father that we'll get up out of our slackness that we'll get up out of our lethargy that we'll get up out of our indifference and respond to the trumpet call and obey your voice Lord God, we pray blessing. We pray blessing on the churches throughout the city in Sunderland as they strive to make known Jesus. Bless them. Bless their leaders. Bless their pastors. Bless our, uh, the leaders that you've given us here. Thank you for those who seek to lead the work on, dear Father. Thank you for Paul Hudson that, that's giving, uh, uh, Lord, uh, help and support. And Lord, for the future days, as a new pastor comes to this fellowship, we pray your blessing upon him. We pray your anointing upon him. We'll rise to support them. We'll rise to be with them. We'll rise, dear God, our Father, to march alongside them, to respond to the trumpet calls of God. Oh, God, our Father, just take us this morning and use us and speak to us and oh father help us to open our lives cleanse our hearts and minds let your word wash over let your word wash away the lethargy and the indifference and may we rise to serve you and answer the trumpet call oh god oh god 
Oh God, Lord, we, we, we pray for the great needs of the day, Lord. Oh, Father, we, we pray for our Queen at this time. You know all about her, all that's gone on. Father, she might be our Queen, but she's a woman. She's a woman. She's human, just like us. And Lord, she's grieving over the loss of a husband of 70 odd years. Lord, it's a long time to be together. Oh, Father, we pray that you bless her, that you be with her and the family and comfort them. And Lord, for the needs in this fellowship, Lord, we, we pray for a little boy, Sam, who's got great needs, Lord, as he suffers with this, well, with this condition, this, this cancer, Lord. Oh, Lord, we pray for Sam this morning, that, Lord, you'll do a miracle in his body, that, Father, you'll come and you'll bless him, and that, Lord, whereas uh, the platelets that are in his body have, have, have crushed, Lord, and there is now no longer any defence there for him, we pray, our God and Father, you will do such a work in him that he will bounce back in health and be vigorous and vibrant and be a happy four-year-old that his mum and his grandparents his mum and his dad and his grandparents will see God working in miraculous power and Father, there are those in the fellowship. Lord, they're looking for a new home. Uh, there are two families particularly that need new homes. Lord, bless them and provide for them. Oh God, our Father, come now. And Lord, for those listening in this morning, for those with great needs, those who are watching me this morning, oh God knows your need. God knows exactly where you are. I don't want you to reach hands out to me, but Lift your hands to heaven. Reach out to the Father this morning as I pray in Jesus' name that this God who trumpets, this God who speaks and leads and guides will come into your situation this morning, will bring blessing and meet your need. Father, you can see those with hands raised right now. You can see those reaching out to you. And I pray, dear God and Father, as they reach out, you'll fulfill your word that, Lord, you'll come and bless them those that draw near to you oh god you say in your word you'll draw near to them so come near to these folks watching this morning hands raised reaching out to you bless them heal them meet their needs practically provide for them do a great work in their homes in their families in their lives oh god our father come and bless them we pray and Lord, as this fellowship launches out this week with hundreds of other Elim churches, with the Alpha Course reaching out and into homes with the good news of the gospel, we rise as a fellowship in prayer, dear Father. Oh, we plead your blood over this work as it goes forward, the technology, the organizing. Lord God, we rise as a fellowship to pray for the work of Alpha here in Sunderland that you'll bless it and make it fruitful we pray and lord we pray that we'll still invite lord some of us have forgotten about it some people think it's not for them we pray father in jesus name that we'll all invite that we'll all take on board this great opportunity oh god our father we pray in jesus name now that you'll come and you'll bless the people of god Oh, God, our Father, we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We come to the end of our service now. Pray that the Lord will bless you, that the Lord will keep you, that the Lord will shine his light, his grace, his face upon you and be good to you. Oh, dear brother, sister. Don't forget this week Alpha starts. Pray about it, dear friend. Get involved in it. Don't be on the outside looking in. Get involved in it. Pray, pray much. We start Wednesday at half past seven. Pray for all the churches. Pray for your own fellowship. Oh, that God's blessing will attend. Oh, God. Come and bless. Saturday morning at eight o'clock, prayer meeting. And again, then next Sunday, as my old pastor say, next Lord's Day, God willing, we'll gather again. Oh, we pray. And pray, church, for, 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 for a new pastor. 
Pray that God will bless and lead and guide in all the deliberations that are carrying on. Oh, we ask it now. The Lord bless your week. The Lord go with you. The Lord give you a great week. God bless you.